Well, good afternoon, Toby Day. Oh, I'm some on Monday. Some warm, lovely. Weather out there now is looking oh, fantastic. I hope you've all had a nice weekend and hope everybody's all right. That Carol up there, I hope you're getting better, mate. Um, just take care of yourself. I think all of us stay safe. We've, we're almost there now. We're almost there. It's going to be all right. See, with everything coming on and lovely. I'm looking forward to it. Have a nice bit of summer. Now, I'm going to do a story today. I do stories now and I'm just an odd a poem now and then. But I want to thank everybody that put the poems in. And well, congratulations to the two people that won. And um, I said, if anybody's got anything they want me to do or say or whatever, just contact me and I'll give them a go. All right. Now, this one's called Miss Letty's Tay Room. Miss Letty decided to cash in on the visitor business from her cottage in St. Ives Road. She didn't want to bother with bed and breakfast, so she owned a little tea room that was decked out with flowers and she used her best clone. The menu was writ on a blackboard with a bit of chalk her grandson gave her. Miss Letty didn't know what visitors liked. She had cream tea, saffron cake, plus a load of nicey and twas all homemade. Dickie Bray, the odd job man, was passing Mrs. Letty's place, so he thought he would have a geek and give her a bit of custom. He went into the tea room and said, I'll have a cup of tea, Mrs. Letty, if you please. Mrs. Letty was some glad to see Dickie. Fact was her first customer, but she didn't tell Dickie. She gave the fire a bit of a poke and put the kettle forth. She had fresh tea made in no time. When Miss Letty gave Dickie his cup of tea, Dickie said, I always pay cash, Mrs. Letty. How much do I owe you? Oh, that's sixpence, Mrs. Letty replied. Dickie counted six pennies from his coins, he has, and gave to her, Miss Letty. I haven't got much money, Dickie said, but how much is your cheapest bit of nicey? Mrs. Letty, knowing Dickie couldn't read or write, went through the menu, telling him the prices. Oh, tis no good, Dickie said when she had finished reading them out. I can't afford none of them. How much is it for a bit of bread and butter? Fortin's, Mrs. Letty said. She was getting a bit fed up with Dickie by this time. But the customer is always right, she told herself. How much is a bit of bread and margarine, Dickie asked. Threatens, Mrs. Letty answered. Dickie quickly took a geek in his money. No, oh, no good, I've got to get back here as well. How much is a bit of bread without butter? Tuppence, surely you can afford that, Dickie, Mrs. Letty asked. Beginning to feel a bit tasty with Dickie now. No, tend as simple as that, Dickie said. I got a lot on this week. If a bit of bread without butter is tuppence, how much is a bit of bread with, without margarine? Must be cheaper. Of course, there's your hedge it. That's only a penny. Dickie smiled. Now you're talking, I'll have a bit of bread with without margarine. Thank you. I'm going to do a little, uh, well, a little small poem here now by the late Brenda Watton. This one's called Acupuncture. I'm having acupuncture with needles and with pins. The nice young ladies filled me full of holes. Doesn't hurt or nothing, and in spite of all my sins, I'm looking better for it, so I'm told. She stripped me to my underwear, lie on a tiny bed, with a pit soft and dreamy thereupon. She pushed me back and squeezed a bit. Relax to me, she said. My dear, I couldn't hear her. I was gone. And now we've started swimming in a handsome little pool. They've warmed the water. Ted didn't like the sea. My car. I'm like a fairy there, or a kid just out of school. You've never seen the likes of John and me. So now I'm like a pepper pot with owls just everywhere, because of every needle and every pin. I think when I go swimming, the water can't decide if it should be going out or coming in. That's from the left, Brenda Wooden. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.